Can everybody hear me okay with this new mic? Can you give me a thumbs up? Okay, perfect, thank you. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And yeah, we let's jump right in. And the first thing that we're gonna go over are conditionals. So uh, what are conditionals? And to keep it simple, um, if a condition is met, uh, then do something else. If that condition is not met, then we're gonna do uh, something else. And to structure a conditional, we use these signs here. So we have greater than or less than, uh, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, uh, which I'm sure most of you have seen. And here's where it gets a little complicated. So we have these two here and one's called equal to, and I put value only, and then exactly equal to uh, in parentheses value in data type. And what I mean by that, uh, by those two is, well, it's probably best if I go over a quick uh, coding demo. So let's do that really quick. So what I mean by that is for equal to, and then the equal to with the three signs. Now, if I were to store a variable, let's just say I did uh, let, let's say I wanted to store a number. And let's see, and let's just store, let's just store the number five. And then let's say I wanted to store another number, the same number, but I wanted to store the string version of it. So I would do something like that. So I have the number five as an integer and then the number five as a string. So actually, I'm going to show you a, a conditional right here in an if statement. So uh, here's a perfect example. Now, I'm going to say if number is equal to string number, then I'm going to want to print something to the console. I'm just going to say, this is true, right? Um, else, if it's not, then I'm going to print false. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run it. And what I should get in this console down here is true. So run and I get true. And the reason why that is, is because this equal sign here, the double equal sign, that just means um, is the value equal, right? And it is, right? We have the same value here, five and five. But let's change it up and let's put a third equal sign. So three equal signs means exactly equal to. And what that is, is the value has to be the same and the data type also has to be the same. So if I were to run this, um, Paul Minow, what do you think we're going to get in the console? I'm just going to, let's see. I think it's going to, I couldn't see it. Hmm, I think it will say print it's true since like, you wrote um if number is equal to string number or like um number you wrote number as five and string number is five then if it's equal to five then it will print it will, and the console will print true okay so yeah let's have a look let's see what we get it is false and the reason why it's false so remember with this exactly equals to, um, it has the, the value has to be the same and so does the data type. Now the value may be the same. They're both the number five. However, the data type of this, let number equals five, that's actually an integer. And the data type for line two is a string. So because they're different data types, we're gonna get false here. Even so though is it um because uh is it is it because like your um is it, is it because like you put number five for a string in um in colons and don't, not, not colons but like yeah 
quotations. Like, quotations, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, since you put them in quotations, like, um, it knows it's like a string, so it wouldn't, so it just, it will just print false. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we're getting false. So I wanted to show you guys a demo of that because um, when it comes to conditionals, those are the two things that get the most confusing um, is the number of equal signs. So I wanted to you know, show you guys that um, in a quick demo. But uh, let's go back to the slides. Does anybody have any questions on that? No? OK. So we will go ahead and move forward. Sorry, it's running a little slow on my side. There we go. All right, so going back to the if statement, um, I said, if a condition is met, then do something else. If that condition is not met, uh, then, then do something else. So it's kind of it's similar to life, right? Um, for example, you know, if you're, if you're at home and you look outside the window and it's sunny, it's either sunny or rainy, hot or cold, um, so here's a good example of an if statement or an if condition, right? So if it's sunny outside, uh, then put on a t-shirt and shorts. Else, if it's not, then put on a coat, right? Else, if it's raining, put on a coat. Um, so we actually encounter you know, these if statements and conditions a lot in life, right? We, we, we make decisions depending on um, our surroundings. So an example of here uh, to the right, if you look at this code, um, what I did is I have a variable and it's just storing a random uh, test score. And if that test score is greater than or equal to 70, then congrats, you passed the test. That's what I'm gonna print to the console. Uh, else, and meaning if it's, lower than 70, then bummer, you did not pass the test. So if I were to run this code, I'm gonna get, well, in this, in this execution, I got 97. So what's gonna happen is it's going to execute this block of code. It's gonna say, congrats, you passed the test. And the reason why is because the random number that I got here was uh, greater than or equal to 70, right? If I got, uh, you know, 67, 68, then this code would have ran right here. It's going to say, bummer, you did not pass the test. So it's just running blocks of code depending on the condition. All right, so let's move forward. And let's go over loops. So in your programming career, you're going to run into loops a lot. It's a, it's a very standard thing uh, to know. So I wanted to um, show you guys this. So, so to keep it simple, use loops when you want to run a block of code multiple times until a condition is met. So we have three different types of loops. Uh, we have the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. Now the for loop, um, we'll go over that first. It's built using three components, right? So we have if you take a look at the code here, we have let i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than five, semicolon, and then i plus plus. Now, what that is, is the i, the variable that we're declaring here is, think of it as a counter. Um, and think of the i is less than five as the condition. And then i plus plus is actually, um, it's, it's increasing i by one each time it runs the code. So we're gonna go from point A to, to point Z here. So once we get to the loop, i is equal to zero. Now it's going to print this to the console. Um, it's gonna say this will print to the console five times. Now when it runs this first, uh, the first time, What's going to happen is i is actually going to increment because of this i plus plus. So i is going to be one now. 
And then it's going to come down here and print this again. And then it's going to repeat itself, increasing by one each time until this condition is met. The I is less than five. So what's going to happen is when I is five, it's actually going to exit this loop, right? Because that's, a, that's the condition we gave it. And as you can see down here in the console, um, this will print to the console five times, one, two, three, four, five. It prints to the console five times and then exits the loop. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Hey, you guys are smart. This is the, this is the one that's like probably the, the hardest to understand. So um, let's move forward to the while loop. So uh, the while loop is to, just to keep it simple, uh, this code is going to run, right? This code is going to run until this condition is met, right? So until the counter is um, greater than or equal to five, well, until it's equal to five. So again, if we, and actually in this code, I put an uh, increment in here. So I put counter plus plus. That's how you're going to increment um, this, this counter integer. So we're going to go into this while loop and it's going to print counter still less than five to the console. Uh, and then we're going to increment the counter. So now it's going to be one. It's going to check this condition. Okay, one is still less than five. Let's go ahead and run this code again. Increment, check the condition. Okay, now it's two. Two is less than five. Go ahead and run this again and so forth. So it's just going to keep running and running until uh, until the counter is five, and then it's going to exit the loop. So now let's go to the do while loop here. And the do while loop is very, very similar to the while loop. Um, as you can see down in this code, it, you're going to use the keyword do. Um, and then you're going to put in your code. And then after, you're going to close that with the curly braces. And then you're going to use the keyword while. And then your condition is actually going to go down here. So you're basically saying, do this, run this code while the condition, while the counter is less than five. It seems very similar, right? But there is one key difference with the do while and the while loop. And the difference is the, the do while loop is going to run at least once, right? It's going to run at least once. So what I mean by that is if you were to come up here to the while loop, say if the counter was five, say if I changed this zero to five, what would happen is we would get down to this while loop and the counter, if it's five, it's not gonna even run this code because the condition is already met, right? The counter is, um, it, it's greater than five or greater than or equal to. But this do while loop, uh, it doesn't matter if, if I were to put five, this code is still gonna run at least once until it gets to this condition. And then it's gonna say, oh, well, this condition's met and then exit. So that's the, the key difference is do while loop will run at least once. Any questions? Annabelle? Is there any like main difference for for while and do while, like for for? Um, between the for and the do while and the while loop? Um, I think the main difference is the for loop is just structured very differently. So for loop is used mainly for iteration. If you want to run code a certain amount of a certain number of times, uh, then the for loop is great for that. It's great for iterations. Um, so I would say that is the main, the main difference. Also, um, so since like we're have the for and the while like loop, like since they're like pretty similar, like um, something also pretty close to that might be like the forever loop. Um, 
but then like I think the forever loop like prints the like forever so like um does like the forever loop like have any difference of like the for a while loop or does it just like keep on printing itself over and over like automatically just doesn't stop until you stop the code or like um when you like input something that like doesn't like change or like does it like change its order does it, like stop or like exit exits the loop yeah exactly yeah you can definitely you can definitely um and you'll probably do this at least once in your career is uh, you're going to find yourself in a never ending loop right um you, you could you could do it by accident where a loop just keeps running and running and running and running and never stops um i've done it before where I have stuff printing at the console and it just it just keeps going and going and going and going and I have to stop the program. Um, and that's because of a never ending loop. So is yeah, that that's a, so was that a forever loop or is that the I mean the while one is the while loop is like when you um like it, it doesn't like it, it doesn't start repeating until you um and put the correct number. Exactly. Yeah, so it depends on the condition. It depends on what what you put for the condition. Um, so if what I did for this while loop is I, I didn't want it to be a never ending loop. So what I did is I made sure that the condition was going to be met. Um, so that's why I set the counter. That's why for the condition I put counter is less than five um, because I don't want it to keep running and running. I wanted to make sure that it stopped after a certain amount of times. All right, let's keep let's keep moving forward. And let's go over logical operators. Uh, let's see, let me move this. Yeah. Uh, so logical operators, um, we have uh, three main ones. So we have and, or, and not. Um, so let's go over and um, to use it in your code, you're gonna use two ampersands. Uh, back to back, as you can see right here. And what it does is it combines two or more operands um, and all the operands must be true. So yeah, that might sound a little cryptic now. So let's jump into the code and let me let me try to explain this to you guys. So um, what I did is I created two variables and I'm storing a Boolean, right? So true or false. Um, and what I did is I created one that says, has a serial bowl and I set that equal to true. And then I put let has spoon uh, equal to true. So what this is, is um, I, was, I was trying to, you know, simulate, you know, waking up in the morning and you have a bowl of cereal, right? And to have a bowl of cereal, to eat a bowl of cereal, you need a bowl and then you need a spoon, right? So, you know, if you don't have a bowl, then, you can't pour your cereal into anything. If you don't have a spoon, then you can't eat it. So what I did here is I used an if statement, an if else statement. And then within it, I have my condition and I'm using a logical operator. So basically what I'm saying here, now, if you look at if has cereal bowl and has spoon, uh, then I'm going to print to the console saying cereal time, it's time to eat. Else, if I'm missing any one of those items, if I don't have a bowl or a spoon, well, then how am I supposed to eat this? You know, I, I can't eat my cereal yet. So does that make sense to everybody? So that's um, how logical operators can uh, be useful. Now let's go over to the or logical operator. And what that does is it combines two or more operands, um, but at least one operand must be true. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit. In this and logical operator, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, when I said all operands must be true, um, that means has serial and has spoon must be true. If I were to change the serial to false, or the has spoon to false, then what's gonna happen is how am I supposed to eat this is going to print out to the console. So both operands must be true, right? So for this or, 
I'm saying at least one operand must be true. So in this example here, I have has pen soul equals true and then has pen equal to false. Now, when I'm writing my if statement here, I set up the condition as has pencil or has pen. And what that means is if I have a pencil, then this whole statement is going to be true. And I'm going to print to the console writing something down. Or if I don't have a pencil and I have a pen, then it's still true. And I'm going to be able to write something down. Uh, else, if I don't have either, if both of these are false, then this is going to print this block of code. I don't have anything to write with. And that's the how the or logical operator works. And now for the last one, which speaks for itself really, is the not operator. And all that means is it runs a block of code if the condition is not met. So in this example here, in this code snippet, I created a variable and I just set it equal to false, is hungry equal to false. Now, to use the not operator, you use the um, exclamation mark and you set that right next to the, your variable that you wanna use. So what I did is um, if I'm not hungry, right, is hungry exclamation mark. If I'm not hungry, then print to the console, not hungry. And that's how the not logical operator works. Anybody have any questions on any of the operators? All right, let's keep going. Okay, so let's go over arrays. Now, what do arrays do? So arrays store a list of values of the same type and they are declared like variables. So I have this piece of pizza here um, because one, I like pizza and two, uh, they're kind of like arrays. So think of um, arrays like, well, if you think of variables, uh, remember how I explained them as boxes that, that store information? So an array is kind of similar to that. It's like a box, but it's storing many different elements, you know, many different objects. So imagine like a pizza box and each uh, pizza slice is its own element or like its own, um, its own object. So let's go into the code and maybe it'll make more sense. So in this code here, what I did is I created uh, well, I used the let keyword, and then I created the name of my array, and I just called it Pokemon cards. And for an array, what you want to do um, to create one is you want to use square brackets, like I did here. So you're going to have the square brackets, the left square bracket, and then I enclose it in a right square bracket. Now, what I did is I have... Uh, Pikachu, Charizard, Jigglypuff, Greninja. Um, and I enclosed each one in string, in, in double quotes. So what that means is this is an array of strings, right? So you know how to declare variables, uh, independent variables with uh, creating a string, but now the, an array is actually holding a lot of, you know, many different ones. So I have, you know, four different strings here and each one is that slice of pizza, right? All in one box. And that's what an array is. And the cool thing with arrays is I can access um, individual slices. I can access individual um, uh, data pieces here. And I can do that by writing the name of the array and then enclosing using square brackets and putting the number of the element that I want to uh, access. So one thing to keep in mind is right here, Pikachu, Charizard, Jigglypuff, Greninja, each one of these, think of it as an element, 
right? So this is an element. This is an element. This is an element. This is an element. And another thing to keep in mind is array elements, they start at zero, right? You, you, computers usually start at zero, right? It, 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 not like not like us humans, we usually start with one, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, computers um, usually start at zero. And here's an example of, of that. So Pikachu is in the element, uh, array element zero. Charizard is one, Jigglypuff is two, Greninja is three. And all I did here in the console is I'm printing out my, I'm accessing that array and I'm printing out my favorite Pokemon card, uh, which is Pikachu. So uh, to do that, Pokemon cards, and then in square brackets, the number of the element that you wanna access. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on arrays? Annabelle? So would you be like, when you're making the game hit, uh, block them, uh, you always have to hit the certain character. Would mm -hmm. it work like when you put those characters out, all of them, uh, would like where the, it says Pokemon cards and then the square brackets and then the zero, would you put that, the number that it's the certain character is in and then put that number there? Yeah, 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 kind of kind of like that, exactly. So the reason why I'm showing this to you guys is because you're going to need it for the final project, right? So um, in this example here that I'm showing you with the Pokemon cards, what you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna store an array. You're gonna use an array to store your images. And those are the characters that are kind of flipping around and, and you're trying, you know, you're trying to whack, whack the mole those images. So you're going to be storing that in an array. Uh, and then um, you're going to be accessing um, those images randomly. And then that's how we're going to uh, move them around and make them interactive for the user. So yeah, um, good question. Would, would this also be used like if I, um, in my final project, like if I press something that just plays a note, musical note, like, will this ever be used? Or like, if it can, then how could it be used in my, in my final project? Um, yeah, so, um, it's like, I would, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't like really be, I wouldn't like, um, be having any images or like flipping around because, um, I don't want things to get like a little too crazy. And then you know, I just want to keep things a little simple. I'm only using like, Three images, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, Paul, if you want to come to office hours after class, um, we'll, we'll go into that and I'll, and I'll show you how you can um, implement that um, idea, your final project idea with something like this. All right. Let's see. 531. Okay. And now wiring the JavaScript file to HTML. Um, I think most of you have seen this already. Um, it's good practice to keep your files separate. So to keep your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript separate. Now to connect your JavaScript file to your HTML, what you wanna do is you wanna take this code here using the script tag, and then write in the source, and then in double quotes, put the name of your JavaScript file. And you're embedding this into your HTML file in the body. So you're gonna to wanna to write this script tag, the source equals script.js and the body um, of your HTML file. And that's how you're connecting your JavaScript to your HTML. Now let's go over the HTML DOM. So HTML DOM, uh, it stands for Document Object Model. So just another fancy you know, acronym. Um, so HTML DOM, but what is it? And uh, one way to think of it is um, it's kind of like the, the, the battery 
right? It's the battery for, for JavaScript. So when you open a web page, the browser, it creates this DOM or document object model of the page. And what it does is it, uh, it's not only a programming, it's a programming interface, but it also structures HTML elements as a tree of objects. And once the DOM does that, uh, JavaScript is, once JavaScript is given this object model that the DOM created, um, now it's capable of being JavaScript, you know, doing what JavaScript does, which is changing HTML elements and attributes on the page. You know, it's, it's changing, it's manipulating CSS styles and it's reacting to, to, to users, to HTML events, which I think we'll, we're going over next week. Um, so all in all, it's a programming interface and an object model. So it's the battery. It's, it's providing that it's providing, uh, JavaScript, the ability to be JavaScript and to change elements on the page. And here's just an example of the tree, um, the tree object, <clears throat> excuse me, um, object, uh, tree that HTML DOM does. All right. Anybody have questions on the DOM? All right. Now let's go over the get element by ID method. So it represents an HTML element with the given ID attribute, one of the most common methods used to manipulate elements on the DOM. So manipulate elements on your web page, basically. And one way we can use the get element by ID is like this. So I'm gonna create a variable, I'm gonna call it dog. And to use get element by ID, you wanna write document dot get element by ID. And then in the parentheses, you're gonna use double quotes or single quotes, whichever one you use. You're gonna put the ID of the um, of the HTML element. So the HTML code here, um, I'm using span. Does everybody remember span? HTML, HTML and CSS. It's basically just allocating a space uh, on the HTML page. So what I'm saying here uh, on this slide is I am allocating space on my HTML page for uh, an image, for an image of a, of a bulldog. And this, in this image or this space here, I'm going to name it bulldog. And the reason why is because I know the image of the bulldog is going to be there. And then in the JavaScript up here, what I'm doing is I'm accessing that, I'm accessing that space and I'm storing it in a variable. And Actually, I'm gonna go over this in the coding demo today. So I'll show you this in action here. Uh, and then I'm also gonna show you um, inner HTML. All right, so demo time, um, but it looks like it's 5.36. So let's go ahead and take a quick break. Let's get back at uh, 5.41 and then we will go over the demo. Demo here. So for this demo, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed images on an HTML page. And each time I refresh the page, I'm going to get a random image. So a different image um, every time. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with the HTML file and the nice thing with Repl.it is it's already wiring your JavaScript file for you, but I just wanted to show you guys, um, um, I wanted to show you guys uh, how to do it um, in case you use VS Code or anything else. Sometimes they don't do it automatically for you. So I have my script tag and then I have my source equal to the name of my JavaScript file, which is script.js. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. So what I need is 
I need a spot on this, um, on this HTML page um, to put that image that I'm going to change every time I refresh the page, right? And to do that, um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on somebody. Uh, let's pick on Annabelle. Annabelle, do you remember what tag we're going to use here to allocate a space on the HTML page? No. No? Okay, that's all right. So for this, we're going to use span. The span tag. Right? And then within the span tag, the first tag, uh, I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to give it an ID. And what would make sense for that? Well, um, I said that I was going to embed an image and each time I refresh the page, it's going to be a, a random image, uh, should be. Sometimes you might get the same image because it's being picked randomly, but um, we'll just still call this, we'll call this a random uh, image, IMG, short for image, just like that. So now that we have this uh, span tag and this space allocated, uh, let's head over and do some JavaScript. Well, um, Mr. Ramirez, could you um, do you mind if you like zoom the code in a little bit? It's kind of hard to see, actually. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Let's see. Here we go. Zoom in. Can you guys see that better? All right. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, so yeah, let's go back into the project. Uh, so actually I need the images, right? I, I need to gather my images that I want to use and, uh, store them. And it's always best to store them in their own folder. Uh, that way you keep your work nice and organized. So what, what I like to do is I'll create a folder here and then I'll just name it IMG. And that's how I know, okay, this folder is strictly for my image files. Uh, can, you, can you show us again how to make a folder? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So up here, you're going to have uh, two buttons. You have add file and then add folder. So all I did is I just clicked on add folder. And what it's going to do is it's going to allocate this, uh, this text field for you. And then all you want to do is you want to name your folder. And then it'll create it. So this, uh, this button here, they kind of look similar, it, but this kind of has like an outline of a folder with a plus sign in it. Uh, but if you hover over it, it'll say add folder. And then that's the one you want. All right, so let's go ahead and add the files in there. So I already, um, I already created some files and um, some image files here. So I'm just gonna grab these and what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab them and then hover over your folder and then just drop them. And what you're gonna see is they're gonna start loading and just like that, easy peasy. So now I have my image files um, organized in my image folder. So now let's go ahead and let's do something with these, with these images. So let's head over into the script.javascript uh, or script.js uh, file, and let's start writing some JavaScript. All right. So I'm going to create an array, and this array is going to store these images, right? It's uh, so there's going to be I have I have four uh, four images. So there's gonna be four spots in the array. Now, this array is not going to change, right? I'm not gonna be adding anything to it or removing anything to it. It's, it's gonna be constant, right? So I'm gonna to wanna to declare this array, but use the constant keyword. So let's see, um, Josephine, do you remember the keyword that we use for constant? Oh, sorry, I didn't see your hand up. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was gonna ask 
For the folder, did you select file or folder? Oh, for the folder. So I selected this button right here. If you hover over it, it says add folder. And then that's the one I selected. Yeah, and then after you created the folder, it says add file or folder. Oh, yeah. So for that, um, well, actually, I guess for this part, um, you won't be able to uh, do it on your side because I had some images already ready for this demo. But all I did is you're going to open up your, your files, like your file management. And say if you downloaded a, a file, um, an image file, then all you would do is drag it. You would drag it until IMG highlights, and then you would uh, drop it into this folder and it'll start to download for you. Okay. All right. Let's see. Grace, do you remember what keyword we use for constant? No, I think, I think you might be muted. Okay. That's okay. Well, uh, so let me go ahead and uh, continue with the demo. So for the constant, you just think of the word constant, right? So for the keyword, it's just going to be const. So C O N S T. And now I want to give this a name that makes sense. So I'm creating an array uh, that's storing images. So I would ask myself, okay, well, what kind of images am I storing? And as you could probably tell by the names of these images, uh, Basset Hound, Bulldog, Chow Chow, Frenchie, it's a, they're images of dogs. So uh, for this array, I'm just gonna call it dogs, right? That makes the most sense. For anybody that is looking at my code, they'll understand you know, what the array is storing. Oh, okay, it's an array of dogs. And then, Again, you're going to store it in square brackets and then always put that semicolon at the end. So if I wanted to store the images of these, um, of these dogs, what I have to do is I would store them as if they were strings. Uh, but I, what I have to do is I have to include the name of this folder as well. So what I would do is type in IMG because that's the name of my image folder. And then I would put a forward slash. So now I'm going, I'm going down the hierarchy of, of how I organized my file structure. Um, and now I want to go to the name of the file. So I have one here that's called uh, Basset Hound. So I'm going to type in Basset Hound. And then I also have to add the extension, which is .png. So .png, and then enclose it with double quotes, and then put a comma, space, and then we go to the next one. Um, so let's go ahead and do the remaining three. So name of the folder, forward slash, name of the file, and the extension. And I'll just move forward with the last two. And then we have IMG, and then Frenchie. Frenchie, which are very, very expensive dogs these days. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. And now I have my array. I have my array of dog images. So now that I have it stored in an array, now I want to um, remember I have to embed these in my HTML page. So to do that, I'm going to have to grab this, this 
HTML element here. And if you remember, I named it random image or random IMG. So let's go ahead and access this. Now, when I access it, I'm going to store it in, in, a, in a variable. And let's just call this random dog image. And to access that HTML element with its ID, remember, we're going to do document dot. Let's see, Paul Minow, do you remember what we use? Um, didn't we use the, the document? Not All right, so with document dot get. Um, get element by ID. Yep. Nice. Good job. Get element by ID. And that's what we're going to use. And now we're going to, in parentheses, we're going to store the ID that we gave that HTML element, which um, was, I believe it was random IMG. So we're just going to put in there random IMG. Don't forget to enclose everything, double quotes and parentheses, and then your semicolon. And now what we have to do is we have to use a property to set the HTML element or the, the where, where we put the span tag, right? And to do that, we're going to use a special keyword called inner HTML. Um, and we're, we're going to use it on this variable that we just created. So what I mean by that is all I'm going to do is type in random dog IMG dot, and you'll see, you'll see the IntelliSense pop up for you to select um, certain things. So you can actually like go through here and see what's available and what you're able to use. And there it is, inner, H, inner HTML. So I'm going to select inner HTML. Um, now for this part, this is, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go over this for another couple of weeks, but this is just embedding. What I'm about to do is I'm going to embed HTML in the JavaScript file. So don't worry about this now, we'll go over this later. I just wanted to put it here just for the sake of this demo so I can show you guys uh, get element by ID and enter HTML and arrays at work. So I'm going to, I have code here and I'm just gonna paste it, um, but don't, don't look too deep into it. Uh, this is just for the demo. And I promise you, we will go over this and you'll understand this um, in a couple of weeks. So I have my HTML embedded and I'm accessing my dog's array. So now let's, let's make this, let's make this look pretty. So let's go ahead and let's add some CSS in there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change the color of the body and so background color. I, I think most of you know how we are familiar with CSS and changing the background color. Uh, so I don't know, let's pick a color. Um, Hannah, do you want to pick a color? What's your favorite color? Hello. Blue? Okay. I think I might have asked you that before <laughs> in one of the previous classes, but uh, blue. And then semicolon, and there we go. So let's go ahead and run this and let, let's see what we get. Voila. So now we got our adorable little dog here. <laughs> and uh, each time I refresh the page, I should get a different image of a dog. So there is an adorable fluffy chow chow. Now let's just keep doing, oh, now we got the Frenchie, the very expensive Frenchie. And 
let's just keep going. Oh, we got the chow chow again. So as you can see, each time I'm refreshing the page, I'm getting a random image of a dog, right? There we go. I was, I, was, I was waiting for the bulldog. We hadn't got the bulldog yet. Um, so what's going on here is I stored these images in an array. And this is why I wanted to show you guys math.random and math.floor because I'm using those methods to access, to access the array elements randomly. And that's what's going on here. So it's randomly selecting Basset Hound, Bulldog, Chow Chow, Frenchie. When I refresh that page, I don't know what's going to, to show up. Um, and then I'm just using inner HTML to, to store those images, right? So yeah, each time I refresh, I'm just gonna get a random, a random adorable dog. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, Josephine. Um, so for this, you had to um get the picture with a transparent background, right? Yes, yes, good question. So, uh, if 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 you remember, I think it was the first week. I think I might have provided a uh, a URL for that. So, if you Go to that URL, I think it's called Adobe Spark. So let me just type in Adobe Spark uh, transparent background. Here we go. So this is what you're gonna want, the free online transparent background maker. And if you select that, it's free. You can uh, upload whatever photo you want and it's going to generate and create an image for you with a transparent background, as you can see. And th this is what I used. That's how I was able to uh, print these images uh, without any background, right? So it's just the dog and then the color of the, of the background of the web page. So if you come here, um, you're gonna click upload your, your photo. And then, well, it'll load. And then all you do is you drag and drop your image and then download it. And then you'll be able to use that image in your project, your final project. Well, cool. and your coding assignment. So this is actually a perfect segue. Um, so your second coding assignment, which is posting, well, posted two minutes ago, um, is going to be similar to this, uh, this demo here that I showed you. That's why I wanted to, to show it to you. So this code here, um, I provided that to you. This code, it, it's on the, um, the prompt, um, but you're gonna be doing something similar to this. Um, you're gonna be uh, creating images and then storing in them, them in an array. And then each time you refresh the page, uh, it should pick a photo at random and display it. Anybody have any other questions? <laughs>